Andy, you promise uh, not to get too emotional tomorrow? Uh, now that I'm in the enemy, and it's a little different story when you come back into this area, and uh, it was really nice to uh, go around a couple of the local establishments this morning with a couple of friends of mine and went to one fishing store out on there and went out there and checked out uh, Pro-Am Tackle to see what the, the new gear was for the upcoming season, but that's one of the things that would, uh, this area is famous for, and I enjoyed my time here. It was a very, very, very special place. Uh, for my family and I, and uh, it's always nice to come back. What kind of reaction do you think you're going to get from the fans tomorrow? Well, I heard they boo people here, so I don't know. Maybe they'll boo me. I don't know. It's a, it's one of those things that now that I'm the enemy and uh, uh, we've got a job to do, and uh, our hockey club has uh, had some good games and we've had some poor games, and we just want to just try to build on the, some of the good things that we've been doing and try and take that uh, on the ice tomorrow night. Did you have this the circle blaster? Well, something got in the way last year. I was actually had a conversation with Craig Heisinger uh, probably a, about 10 days before the event happened. And I said, I don't know, the way things keep going, I might be sitting beside you in the press box with, that when the Anaheim Ducks were going to travel to uh, Manitoba. And it just so happened that I went fishing. I went to the mountains uh, after the event. And uh, obviously those things are things that happen in this, this game. And uh, I'm no different than anybody else. It, it does bother you. It hurts. But uh, you got to be prepared to pick up and move on, and I've done that with my family, and I've been afforded an opportunity, this to be my second chance to work for the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club, first as a player and now as a coach, and I feel very, very fortunate. Well, part of you, Lee, you don't take a moment to remember that last night at Winnipeg Arena in 96 when, when, they, when they wrapped up their first version of the Jets? Yeah, that, that was an emotional night for a lot of people, and the, the one thing that's still vivid in my mind is, is the... The amount of emotion that was pouring out of the fans, but there were some people on the ice that was pretty emotional too. And you probably didn't get to see all of that because uh, the camera wouldn't pan every face, but there was a lot of people that were torn up with it, and it was hard. And it was one of those things, that's, those are events that changed your life. And not just uh, one or two people, but a whole community. And it was uh, heart, heart-wrenching and gut-wrenching for a lot of people to let the team go, but business happens and things happen for a reason, but now uh, that's history, and the way this community has responded and been revitalized by the uh, hockey club coming back here, you got to commend Mark Chipman and Craig Heisinger and their ownership group for the job that they've done. And they've got an, an exciting young product on the on the ice. From afar, what have you made of the rebirth of this team in a way? <coughs> I know you haven't been here, but you've seen people you know, clamor around it. And well, it's again, special yeah, it's special because, it, you know, I, again, I think that's, uh, that goes back to the saying, you don't know what you had until it's gone. And in a lot of ways, that applies in this situation. And it's great to see the enthusiasm and the commitment that the community has wrapped itself around the hockey club again. Were there coaches here, Randy, that had an impact on how you coach the game now? Dan Maloney, beyond that? Dangerous Dan? <laughs> we had a few num- names as a player for all coaches, and I'm sure I've got a few uh, behind the scenes. But, again, there's a people that mold you, and, and you take, try to take the positives and the things that, the, that you thought were beneficial both to you and your hockey club and the teams that you coached. It's always a huge learning curve for coaches, that's for sure. Randy, I remember you mentioning uh, a couple of times that people at school do once you got into the coaching that uh, you've never really been a coach until you've been fired or gone through an event as you described it. Uh, is that how you felt uh, just after you had that conversation with Craig Heisinger? Because you'd had so much success here uh, previous to that. Yeah, you know, but again, those things uh, happen in this business. Pro sports is one of, of success, and you're measured usually, and sometimes success isn't even enough in some of the situations that you're pre- presented with and, and you have to live through. And it's just not you. It's There's a lot more at stake than than just yourself. You might be the face of it, but there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes in your family, you're operating your family, the movement of your family, the transition of, of your kids to new schools, new areas, meeting new people. Those are all part of the game, but part of the, the reason that you're in this in this job is you know that that's going to be there. That That is always going to hang over your head. You have better be prepared to deal with it in some People deal with it in a different manner. They lash out or they get depressed or whatever. And to me, it's like it's a turn a page. You move on because you can't change what just happened. All you can do is try to have an, an effect on the future. Will you try and fight the emotion tomorrow night or will you, or will you live in the moment and enjoy it and then turn the page and focus on the hockey game? Yeah, my, my job is to coach the team. Uh, the emotion part and all that has to be 
uh, a subplot. To me, it's all about uh, getting our hockey club and making sure that I have the right people on the ice and they perform to their highest level. Uh, the emotion part of it, uh, uh, in my mind, uh, is just a sidebar at this point. With the here and now, Randy, what, what's the, been the difference on the road as compared to at home with the you know, records reversed? I just think that our, our team has played more relaxed uh, on the road. We've played a, a, a tougher brand, a more competitive brand of hockey on the road. And if we had an answer for it, I tell you, we'd correct it. And those are one of the things that happens in sports. But we have to find a way. And right now, we're not really worried about our home record. We're worried about the Winnipeg Jets on Thursday night. What, is, what worries you about this hockey club? Enthusiasm, you know, the crowd is, is something that they feed off. Uh, I think they're a young hockey club that has uh, some offensive power. And what we have to do is we have to be prepared to match their energy and try to make less mistakes than which they make. Do you think you've, you've changed much as a coach since you were here, you know, with the Moose? For sure. <clears throat> For sure. That's, uh, I think if you, you quit evolving, then you get cast away or you're put on the wayside, by the wayside. I think you have to learn from all the experiences that you, you've had. And, and I can remember my first couple of, uh, uh, forays into the coaching fraternity and behind the bench, there's things that I did that I, I'm not proud of. Some things that I've, uh, acts that I've committed that I'm not proud of. And, and I, you don't see any more of those things. And I, I think I'm a much calmer individual now. He's had this season. Does uh, does the previous coaching version of Randy Carlyle uh, get that credit? Uh, I've made the statement that uh, Nazi in the situation with us is you just do what you're told, and we won't have any issues. If you want to, you know, sidestep some of the issues that you, that happen on a day to day basis, then there's going to be a problem. And go out and earn it, and he's earned it. But I think really in the development of uh, Nazi and. and the uh, situation that he's been provided with our organization, the credit has to go to Dallas Eakins in the American Hockey League because that's where he's he's earned his stripes down there and the learning curve is, is, is great down there for him as it is up here and the transition for him to the from a junior player to an American Hockey League player is a greater uh, challenge versus the one from an American League Hockey player to an NHL player. I think that he's taught him how to become a pro and he's taught him that the things that some of the things that he was doing down there are unacceptable to maintain an NHL quality player. Randy, it's a bit of a homecoming for Colton as well, but um, a lot of people say this is his second chance at, at the bigs, or you've given him a, a second chance. How has he grabbed that? Again, with, with Colton Orr, uh, he's a guy that uh, played very, very well for our minor league team in uh, the Toronto Marlies last year. And I got to experience some of the games and, and then into the playoffs. He wasn't on the playoff roster, but he maintained his presence on the ice. And then he got into some games as the series went on. And he made a commitment to change his body makeup and his, uh, his training methods. And when I met with him at the end of the year, I just told him that if he was to continue to do the things that, that he was taught or had bought into at the end of the season and maintained that through the course of the summer, that we would give him an opportunity if he earned it at training camp. And we feel he's earned it. And uh, that's a credit to the player. But again, I'll mention the name Dallas Eakins because he was there. And he's the guy that was uh, uh, the, the most influential person at the American Hockey League level as head coach. Are you surprised that uh, from your old Jets days, you know, players like Paul McClain, Dale Howard, Chuck, and I'm sure I'm missing one other, have all gone into coaching? Uh, no, I, I think, you know, as if we've stated before, the one thing about coaching, you probably never think you're going to do it when you're playing because you're going to play forever. But the one thing that coaching has done, and has done that for me, and I'm sure with the other individuals that you've talked to, to there, that it gives you an opportunity to get back to the game at the ice level. Yeah, you're not playing it, but you're still involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the game at the ice level, and that's the camaraderie that comes with being part of a team. That's being on the bench and being at the, the ice level on a day-to-day -day basis and then skating practice and doing some of the things that, that you think are the right thing to do to prepare your group to go out and compete. If someone uh, approached you that hasn't been to Winnipeg and asked you what it's like as a hockey city, how would you describe it to them? I'd say very committed, very passionate. Uh, I don't think as a player that uh, you can go uh, many places in this city without being recognized. And if you have a family... Uh, it's it's automatic because your your kids are playing hockey or playing minor hockey or sports. Uh, you participate when you live in this community, 
And that's what uh, the life of a Winnipegger is, is they support the individuals that you, you live with and you grow up with.